This iPath video explains how to carry out a pre-start inspection. This does not replace training and should be done by a trained operator who has either been familiarised with the unit or has been given time to self-familiarise. See the iPath familiarisation statement and the employer nominated person. All machines are different. Therefore, it is important to refer to the actual machine's operator's manual for machine specifics prior to use. The operator should be suitably dressed as per a risk assessment and or specific site requirements. This might include the wearing of a hard hat, suitable footwear, gloves, goggles, etc. Unless the risk assessment states otherwise, this must include personal fall protection, a full body harness and lanyard. For more information see the IPAF harness statement at www.ipaf.org. Identify a safe place to do the pre-use checks away from other people, mobile machinery and vehicles, and without the risk of impact with overhead obstructions or power lines. Before work commences, only machines with proof of a current inspection should be used. Check the machine by following a logical order. There are checklists available as a reminder and instructions within the machine's operating manual. Starting with the boom in the lowered position, working clockwise from ground controls, visually inspect the machine for damage, cracks, leaks, damaged or missing components, excessive wear and decal condition. Now check the machine does not function without the key. For example, this can be done by checking the key switch works and that the other controls do not work with the key in the off position or with the emergency stop out. Then, remove the key before proceeding with the inspection. Check the ground for oil under the machine. This can often be the first hint of a potential problem. Check the tyres, remembering that some solid or foam filled tyres may have a bolt head showing opposite the valve. Check the tyre pressures on pneumatic tyres. Look for cuts, splits, exposed braiding and damage to tread or tyre wall. Look for cracked or damaged rims. Check wheel security by looking for loose, damaged or missing nuts or retainers. There should be no leaking either side of the wheel hub. Check for loose or bent components, pins and fasteners. Check wheel alignment and look for evidence of the wheels having been left in crab, four-wheel steer or two-wheel steer mode. Check the slew ring for missing teeth or damage and for excessive movement of boom. Also, has the slew lock been left engaged? Check the chassis decals and plate for important information, warnings and directional arrows. Ensure catches and hinges are functioning properly when raised and secure when closed. Check the fuel level is sufficient for the day. Check the hydraulic oil level. When you do this you must make sure that the boom is fully stowed. Visually check the hydraulic manifold for leaks. Check for loose, damaged or exposed wires. Check for damaged or leaking hoses. If there is a slope warning device fitted and accessible, insert the key, turn to the ground controls and pull the stop out. Check this device for full free movement and function. Then remove the key and re-engage the stop. Check the power track is securely attached to the boom and without damage to the tracking links and hoses and is free of debris. Check the booms for structural cracks, weld cracks, damage and misalignment. Check pivot pins and securing fasteners. Check the wear pads for excessive wear or missing pads. Check for leaks, frayed or damaged hoses. Also do this around the base by the main ram later in the inspection. Check pins, bolts and fasteners. The basket should not show signs of structural damage or have cracked welds. Check that the decals are clear and readable. Confirming safe working load, maximum persons and wind speed as you do so. Make sure that any gate opens either inwards or lifts upwards and that the gate or opening closes securely and has not been tied open. 
Check the machine document holder for the manual of responsibility or operator's manual and make reference to it as required. Conduct checks to the wheel area as before. Check chassis base as before. Depending on whether you are using a diesel, electric, gas or dual fuel machine, you will need to do the appropriate checks. Check any radiator coolant level and hoses. Check the battery as detailed in the machine's operator's manual. Check for damage or leaking hoses and cables. Ensure catches and hinges are functioning properly when raised and secure when closed. Check the counterweight area for the condition of any decals, pins, limit switches, audio alarms and beacons. The ground controls decals should be clear and visible for each control. Insert key and turn to ground controls. Visually check around and above the machine for hazards and personnel who might be affected during the function checks. Start the engine, elevate the primary boom to just above horizontal and check that the emergency stop works. Then, leaving the emergency stop in, proceed to check the main ram and boom and chassis parts that were previously difficult to access with the boom down. Check for damage or leaks around the hoses, o-ring, pins and retainers, limit switches, structural bolts and welds. When satisfied, return to the ground control function checks. Visually check again for hazards and personnel who might be affected. Check all functions, starting with auxiliary power or emergency lower to lower the machine. Then, Restart the machine engine and function test the slew left and right, telescope out and in, basket slew left and right, and basket level up and down. Continue until all machine ground controls are checked and fully functional. Then, stop the engine, pull the emergency stop out, and turn the key to the platform control before proceeding to the platform controls function check. Use three points of contact for access to the platform through the platform gate. Attach and adjust the harness to one of the anchorage points provided. The platform controls decals should be clear and visible for each control. Ensure directional arrows match the chassis direction. Check the engine does not start with the stop in. Then, start the engine. Check that the function enable works. This is sometimes foot operated and sometimes hand operated. By moving short distances, check the working of the drive, forwards and backwards, steer, left and right, and brakes. The drive should be in high speed with the boom in the lowered position. Check other steering in modes. Check for overhead hazards and then lift the primary boom just above the horizontal and check the elevated drive speed is functional. Stop the engine and check the auxiliary power or emergency lower controls. Then restart the engine and check all boom functions remembering to always look in the direction of travel prior to movement. When the boom is slewed around, check the function of the warning and drive enable functions. Check the basket rotate and level functions. Where oscillating axles are fitted, Drive the boom onto a test gradient as per the manufacturer's manual. Check that the oscillating axles are functional and that the wheels remain in contact with the ground. Once satisfied, park the machine on firm, level ground. Having completed the visual and function tests, the machine should be safe to use. Don't forget to document that you have done the checks. Always refer to the manufacturer's manual for specific machine details. If any defects are encountered, stop the machine, isolate,
hashtag and report to your supervisor.